Continuing on with our animation assignment, there is always two ways that you can find assignment information. You can go to unit modules or you can go directly to assignments. The advantage of unit modules is it will give you all of the run-up to the introduction to the assignment, some past examples, the rationalities behind it, any questions of the day that relate to them, and then assignments will go right to where you post them. I've also updated the course outline just because I've worked hard on these unit modules to give full context for each project in case you're not able to be in class for when they're introduced or if you just forget and want a reminder. So I've updated our course outline with the units that we're addressing in that day. And I just want to show you how it's gone so far. It's been pretty consistent. You know, the first day of class, we went through unit one, second day, unit two, third day, unit three, fourth day, unit four. But then as soon as we started assignments with unit four, that can take a little bit longer. And then when the assignment is due, we introduce the next assignment. That might be the next unit. But depending on how complex that assignment is, depends on how many days we're in that unit. Now, going to right now, you're going to start seeing that we're in unit seven for our assignment three, the GIF transformation project, right? Unit seven, unit seven unit seven and then it skips to units eight and nine together <laughs> and that's because unit eight is going to be covering group presentations and unit nine is going to be covering assignment four which is our black and white logo and we'll do a color variation of the black and white logo which is a vector project and that's an important one because it also introduces vectors as an actual assignment, not just an exercise. And there's a question of the day that goes with it. It's really important for this class and for your digital literacy to know the difference between raster and vector imaging. Then we have spring break. Right after spring break, we come back. And on that Monday, all four groups will give their presentations on their topics. So you're, you're refining those topics now. And we can talk a little bit more about how to build those in Google Slides. There are directions there in Canvas. And then on the Wednesday of the week we come back is our midterm exam. But not only is it our midterm exam, which is actually quite easy. We'll do our little review for it. I mean, easy isn't the right word. It's quite direct, right? It's going to be 14 questions. It's on things we will review. It's just kind of a comprehension check of digital terms, digital concepts. and. In my other studio art classes, I don't have midterms or final exams, but in digital art, there is certain knowledge like resolution numbers and things that you just need to know so that when you leave the class and are doing it, you are well prepared. So on that day as well, this is the big thing we're working on. We have what's called our full class midterm gallery critique. And it's actually our proving ground number three assignment. But to do that, we need to print three projects from the first half of the class. They can be exercises, they can be assignments. Your animation can be one of those that you print, but you will print your refined storyboard. So they all need to be at least eight by 10 and at least 300 pixels per inch to be print resolution. And we're going to map them. You can find the, the map details in the supply list. We'll go over it. They're $3 at Hobby Lobby, the pre-cut 8x10 window mats, and you need three of them, right? And we're going to be printing in lab, making things print ready. The critique is not just having your artwork ready. It's looking at your, your class member's artwork and distinguishing certain qualities about it. So it's effectiveness, it's execution, it's uh, concept, the idea behind it, all of that. So we'll be going through that. Then we move on with more projects. From unit 11 on forward, actually really unit 10, which introduces spot illustrations, your work is going to be kind of completely your own work. We're not going to be compositing anymore. The only compositing we'll be doing is kind of as finishing techniques over the top. Like if you want to add a texture on top of your spot illustration, things like that. You're allowed to composite but the ideas are gonna be wholly your own and usually based on your own drawings, your own concepts. We'll be modifying existing typefaces to go with our posters, but other than that, that will be the end of our compositing. So this GIF animation is 
kind of the end of using other people's pixels. And because of that, you are required not only to show a transformation, but to use something that you've already made in the class. And you can use that in any creative way you want. You can also create a lot of new assets, and most of us will need to uh, in order to animate. So on that course line, you'll see the units built in. You get to the units through the unit modules. And I've tried to label them so they make sense. So unit seven is the GIF animation. That's what we're doing now. That's what I introduced in the last video. But you can also get to it more directly, like just when you need to post things and get them turned in. I don't need to navigate through, through all the, the units. So instead, just go to assignments and scroll right down to the thing you're turning in. But I will all, often give, what's the term? I will give uh, helpful resources on this assignment page that kind of don't fit in other places necessarily. So for instance, I have a, a past digital honors presentation. When I have digital honors students, that's taking the digital art class a second time, making a new portfolio. It's like an independent study portfolio, usually in character design or in graphic design. But part of that, they don't do the group presentations, they don't do the final presentation. Instead, they do what are called mentorship presentations, where they give their tips on how to do the, the digital art projects that they successfully completed, right? So what's really helpful about this is this was the digital honors presentation done while we were remote and everything had to be done with freeware online. So though we'll be using Photoshop because we have access to it, we're in the lab this semester, if you want to work on your PSD animation file, at home on freeware, this is how you can do it in PhotoP and the, with the addition of this program, which is in the directions as well, or this site, which is called giftmaker.me. And the basic idea is that we'll be going over is you create layers in Photoshop. Each layer is where you put your, your assets and you can create your assets out of lots or you can create your layers which will be your frames in your animation out of lots of different assets so we'll call the first assets that we use these are our characters our setting and then we'll change those to affect the actions we want in our story right so if you have a character and you want its mouth to open the character is an asset but then the mouth will be a separate asset because you're going to change the actions of the mouth from close to open. And you can decide whether you want to do that in three steps, in five steps, in two steps, what have you. So it's a lot about organizing layers. But at the end of the day, we'll have a Photoshop file, which I call the stage file, and I'll explain why, that has just clean layers with all of your frames. Once you have that file, it's like a film strip in an old camera. Once you play those through, which we can do in Photoshop, it animates them. In PhotoP, it doesn't have that option. So what you do is you, you output each of those individual layers as an individual JPEG. They'll each be 8 by 8 inches by 150 pixels per inch. You upload them into giftmaker.me, and then you are able with that program just very simply to arrange the layers in the order you want and then to set a timing for each one. And it will play them like an animation because that's all animation is, sequential playing of images and where the artist controls the timing. And when all of that is done, you get an animation, right? This is especially useful for what are called animatics. So animatics are rough animations. And that's basically what we'll be doing with this assignment that preview kind of sketch out a motion sequence it might be for a commercial it might be for a special effect might be for live action might be for animation might be for video games so this is an animatic of a character movement that this digital honor student was designing with a cast through the semester it's kind of for a fighting game and then using that they are able to refine it into pencil tests into smoother frames so this was only nine nine frames or so 
but that might turn into a finished animation of 50 frames in order to, to make everything work. All right. So that's there for you, should you need to work on it at home. And then some past semester demos were also done remotely with those programs. And I will go between each semester, because there's just a lot to show with animation, so many options. If you look at our, our playlists, I just add a liked video. Interesting. You will see past animation assignments. I showed this in the last video. Let me see. So here it is, assignment three, GIF transformation. This one used a creature on a background, right? So you can do it with that assignment. You can do it with what I'll be demonstrating this semester, which is using the emoji. And you can go on back and see lots of different versions. It's not always assignment number three, but it's always the GIF transformation project. In the past, it used to be assignment five. So you'll see all of that. So whether you're wanting to animate a background, animate a creature, animate vector shapes, you know, there should be resources to help you beyond just what I'm demonstrating. The first step is to post your storyboard sketch. This is just a rough nine square cartoon of what character you're going to use, what setting you're thinking of, and what transformation actions you're going to show. So I'm going to start with a really basic yellow face. I'm going to have that transform on a blank background. Be aware of what your setting is. Mine is going to be blank, but that is still a relevant setting, right? When you have Garfield on a blank panel, you look for cute clues as to whether Garfield's inside or outside. If you see Kelvin from Kelvin and Hobbes on a blank panel and Kelvin has a scarf on, then you think he's outside because your audience wants a setting. So think about the setting, even if it's going to be a blank setting. So mine's going to be a blank setting, like the construct in the matrix, where you just see this emoji because you're used to seeing emojis with a blank background when you're texting. And it will make it feel animated within that cyberspace, right? So the first transformation, I say introduce face, right? That's my first action. I introduce it to the audience. Then I'm going to transform it into a cat, a simplified cat emoji. That's my beginning transformation. That would be enough for the whole animation. I could do that across nine panels if I wanted to. Next, I'm thinking I want its mind to be blown. So the cat will then, its eyes will open, its head will explode from the top. And then the cat with its mind blown is then going to freeze. So it's all three things that go into my cat's cradle emoji that I've already created. So that I end with the finished cat's cradle emoji. But the reason you, you draw this out is I have to realize if I have an explosion happening, if that explosion just stays still, well, it's freezing, that's not going to look much like an explosion. So I have to think, okay, as I do the simple thing and then I add more complexity, I then have to think, how do I have to change those assets in each subsequent panel? So I'm going to need to make the cloud of the, the mind-blowing kind of mushroom cloud. I'm going to need to make it move a little bit. I'm going to need to make it a little bit more dynamic. And then it's going to freeze. So even though I'm using something I've already made, I still have to create a lot of new assets. I need to create what the normal face looks like. I need to create what the cat looks like. I need to create all these stages uh, along the way. So these are what are called keyframes. This is the story that I want to tell the audience. These are the nine frames I have to have. That's why we do our sketch. Once I am committed to that, then I start building up my assets. And I do that in Photoshop, but I first do it by organizing what I already have. 
So I'm going to create a folder 